Game farming has changed a lot in the last 20 years. It's become more professional and now it's governed by strict regulation. Good farms will employ a sophisticated breeding program. Birds are specially selected to produce healthy stock with predictable characteristics. We produce on this farm about four different strains uh, to try and reflect really the, the different type of habitat or the different wants and needs of different shoots. Some shoots are DIY keepers, some are commercial, some are low terrain, some are valley shoots, um, all requiring different types of birds for different, different reasons. And so, yeah, we, we've got control over you know, being able to supply and satisfy those needs. By the processes we use in this system, we hope to actually improve the genetic stock and give customers what they want. A really good game farm can make such a difference to a shoot. It can provide not only good quality stock, but good quality advice and guidance. Your first contact with a farmer marks the start of a year-long partnership, so it's a time to reflect with him on how the last season went and work towards placing your order for the next season. You come to the situation knowing what your return was from the previous year, how your birds flew, health issues, that sort of thing, and you'd start the relationship for the year ahead at that point. So record keeping, however small, small the shoot is, is quite important. The game farming year starts in February, when birds are penned for mating and egg laying. The pheasants will begin laying in about the middle of March, and the eggs will be collected daily. The eggs are first washed by hand, and then passed through a machine to be properly sanitised and washed. We're actually sealing the shell surface in the process that we use here. Uh, we use a, a double chemical process which sanitises the eggshell and then seals them um, to stop further bacteria going in through the, the, the shell surface and infecting the, the embryo's development. So the eggs is pH neutral. The eggs will be kept cool until a full batch can be placed in the incubators. This makes sure that all the eggs hatch at the same time on the day that the farmer wants. Yeah, it's fairly accurate and fairly, fairly close. We have uh, four strains on here which will hatch up to about eight hours apart. So we, we gear the setting of the eggs to the takeoff time at the other end when they hatch, so it's all timed to flow. The temperature and the humidity of the incubators is carefully controlled. Four or five days prior to hatching, the eggs will be transferred to hatchers where the humidity will change as the hatching process begins. A hatching day is a busy time for the farmer. The chicks are carefully checked, counted and put into boxes ready to be taken to their brooder pens. During this time the farm will receive some customers. These are shoots who buy in day-old chicks to raise themselves. But most shoots prefer to collect the birds as poults at six or seven weeks old. Probably two-thirds of the chicks uh, that we produce um, end up as poults, sold as poults, the, the remaining third sold as day-olds. This is fairly typical in UK game rearing circles. Two by the next one, and then three, then two. The chicks are transferred quickly to their new home. This is a dedicated rearing shelter where they are fed and watered. There are special heaters in the brooder to keep the chicks warm. At first, the chicks are fed starter crumbs. These are fine crumbs and high in protein, which the chicks can eat and digest easily. As they mature, the feed is changed to mini pellets, and then later, grower pellets. They remain in these sheds, all the larger ones, uh, for up to 10 days or so. Then they're given access to the shelter, as you can see to the side, until about three weeks where they're given access to the full run, grass run out there, being shut back in at night until they're five weeks of age, and then they're given access at will to the, the whole area so they can choose where they want to be, and we hope at night they will tend to settle and jug up in the runs to harden them off prior to being taken to the chute for release. By six or seven weeks, the chicks are considered to be poults. 
They're now ready to move to a shoot's release pen, where the gamekeeper will take over their care. When they're being moved, it's crucial that the birds remain stress-free as much as possible. Handling is kept to a minimum. You don't crate up birds when it's hot. You don't put them into crates when it's hot. If you, you, once the birds are in the crates, they need to be put in the shade and mainly transported as quickly as possible to the, to the, you know, to the end destination. Eight o'clock in the morning, eating from a rearing field. Three and a half hours later, they're you know, continuing that meal elsewhere in a different environment and totally settled. There are regulations in place to limit the times birds will spend being transported, but it's in everyone's interests to keep this time as short as possible. This is one of the advantages of using a local farm. From being rounded up into crates to being released in their new home may only take a couple of hours or so. The release pen would have been carefully prepared for their arrival. Getting used to their new home is a challenging time for the birds. Every effort must be made to avoid stress. They'll be fed with the same feed that the farmer used. The same type of drinkers will be used. And any changes can be phased in, but gradually over time. The relationship between shoot and game farmer does not stop here. Throughout the year, he can give advice on welfare and managing your birds. A good game farmer has a wealth of experience, and it's for these sorts of reasons that choosing a supplier on price alone is a false economy. A good game farm will be the cornerstone of any successful shoot. There are more than 300 commercial farms in the UK. Most of these are members of the Game Farmers Association a trade organisation dedicated to producing quality game birds, so most shoots should be able to find a good one locally. The rules of the GFA require that its members must follow established codes of practice, and this guarantees that any eggs, chicks or poults would have been produced to a high welfare standard. Dedicated, enthusiastic farmers who work hard to support game shooting deserve support, and your shoot will be all the better for it.